Hi everyone, we are going to start with your in class number two. This one is known as Idaho. We are going to go to File, Open, <clears throat> and if you will go to your in class Photoshop assignments, find the word Photoshop, double click, and go to in class number two, you will see the instructions both in a Word document and a PDF and the word forest or the file forest that's a TIFF file. If you'll double click this will open up an image as a TIFF file. This is just a landscape. I'm going to zoom in so you can see how what I do to this document. If you hold on to your alt key and roll it will allow you to um, zoom in. If your mouse does not have a roller you can hold on to your control key and hit your plus and minus to zoom in and out of your document. Once again, we're going to unlock the background and we're going to call this forest. So if you wanted to add things to this, you would be able to do so. One of the first things we're going to do is we're just going to grab your text tool. And with your text tool, we want this to be a white color. So find the brightest white and then go ahead and click OK. It's like I got blue, but which will be fine. I want this to be 72 point. That is equivalent to an inch. And then if you'll change to a very thick font, wide Latin works really well with this document. You just want a really, really thick font. So we're going to go ahead and just make a text box and we're going to type in the words Idaho. If it doesn't fit all the way in your box, remember just make your selection a little bit bigger so that the word Idaho fits inside of there. Notice I'm going to grab my move tool and when I do so, notice that it takes the words that I typed and it gives it the actual name of the layer. As a new user of Photoshop, be sure to label each of your layers so that you know exactly what you're dealing with. One of my favorite tools, you'll get really good at it, is your transform controls up here on the menu. If you click the box, it would allow you to just stretch things or thin things, make them smaller and bigger. And um, I always like to do a little bit of this when I first open up something. So Idaho would look something like this. I'm going to go ahead and apply that transformation. I want this to fit. Um, halfway on the land and halfway in the water as you get started. I'm going to turn off my show transform controls and I'm going to have you go to window and open up what we call the character window. Notice that some of the menus are selected, some are not with a check mark. As soon as I click here, I now when I go to window, notice that I now have a check mark. They work like a toggle key you can turn them off and turn them on at any time. Currently we're going to use this character window. What this allows us to do is to be inside of our text. So I'm just going to double click on this T which indicates the text layer and when I do this it allows me to select um, Idaho. And then I'm just going to show you some of the things that happen when you're inside the character window. I can actually increase the font size by using the ribbon using this ribbon as I head to the left or to the right notice that my font gets bigger as I head to the left my font gets smaller so it allows you to um, visualize um, making this change not only can I do that I can also put space between the characters so this allows me to do just that I can also increase, instead of by font, I can increase the size by percent. And you can see me doing that as well. So it'll, this gives you more options inside this character window as you um, learn about it. You can also do what we call kerning two characters. And if you want to close the space between just two characters, see how I just used this um, option right here to change. They call it tracking, but if you've only got two characters selected, it's known as kerning. 
lines, you can close up the gap between characters. If I want to do all of the characters, I select it, and now I'm closing the tracking between characters. I use tracking as a way of advertising. Sometimes more space between the characters makes it a little bit easier to read. Okay? So that is your character window. So play around with it and see what fun things you can do with the character window. I'm going to once again double click on my T um, text layer. Double click, it will open me back in. I wanted to introduce you to text warping. If you click on this icon, it's known as t warp text. It's always turned off, but we're going to turn it on. And you have these different options to choose from. If I click in arc, I'm just going to kind of slide this window around. I can actually bend this. Maybe that's too much of a bend. But I could bend this and just make a little bit more of an attractive look for the words Idaho. I can also distort the horizontally, or I can distort it vertically. And um, at any point you can cancel, or you can go back into it, and you can choose a different one. This is what a bulge would look like. Um, in this lesson, you choose whichever one is most attractive for you. I'm just looking for a change in the warping of the text, and then you go ahead and click OK. Once you get your text warped, kind of position it between the water and the land, add a drop shadow under layer, layer style, drop shadow, just so that the words Idaho kind of look two-dimensional. And then we're going to learn one new thing with this assignment. We're actually going to take the word Idaho and we're going to rasterize this, turn it into a layer so we can add um, some other things to it. And it needs to be an image instead of text layer. To do that, once again, everyone, you go to Layer, Rasterize, Layer. By doing so, I now have converted my text layer to an image or a graphic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to um, Image. Actually, it's under Layer, and I'm going to do what's called a New Adjustment Layer. And when I go to this New Adjustment Layer, I'm actually going to go into what's called U and Saturation. And this is, I'm just going to put Color Idaho. I'm going to change the color of Idaho by adding what's called U and Saturation. When you do this, you're going to go over here to the Adjustment Layer, and you're just going to click the words Colorize. Um, when you're on this layer, it will actually allow me to change the color. So when I click here, notice that I can make adjustments to that particular layer. And you can change this to any color that you would like, and it allows you to make adjustments to that layer. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do a file save as. And once we do this, this is known as forest underscore your first and your last name. It's also in class number two. Make sure and change the format once again to a PSD so that I can see your layers when you upload it. Make sure that you save it in your Photoshop completed folder. It's the same place as where you saved your other one. Maybe I should name this correctly so that they're all the same. I apologize for that. As long as you keep track of what you name them, that's what matters most. Go ahead and hit Save. Click OK. And now you have completed the PSD. We're going to save it one more time. File, Save As. We're going to change the PSD to a JPEG. And then go ahead and hit Save. Make sure that you do the maximum option of a JPEG. And now you'll have uploading um, in class number two which is known as Idaho.